hello dear students in this lecture we will be discussing different types of numerical problems related to population genetics and we will be discussing problems related to hardy weinberg's law so uh, as we have already discussed the theoretical part of population genetics in first uh, part of this lecture uh, so you can see the first part of uh, population genetics lecture for uh, the theory part of this and for from those lectures we know that according to hardy weinberg's law a population when it is in genetic equilibrium then it follows two equation first is p plus q is equal to 1 uh, where p is dominant allele and q is recessive allele and by this equation we can find the um, um, allelic frequency then the second equation is for genotypic frequency so for this uh, the formula is or the equation is p square plus q square plus 2pq is equal to 1 where p square represents the homozygous dominant genotype q square represents the homozygous recessive genotype and 2pq re represents uh, the heterozygous genotype so these are the two basic uh, formulas for solving problems related to hardy weinberg's law and for uh, now in this uh, chart you can see that when uh, random mating happens then it produces genotypes in the proportion p square plus q square plus 2 pq where p square is homozygous dominant genotype uh, q square is uh, your homozygous recessive and aa that is your heterozygous it is represented by 2 pq because there are two two uh, genotypes of aa so these are the two basic for, uh, equations which you will now, remember uh, for solving you can these see problems. This chart, uh, this uh, chart where you can see that on x-axis you have the allelic frequency, and on y-axis you have the genotypic frequency. So, like um, you can see that allelic frequency on the x-axis, you can see that. Uh, the, it is given uh, for the dominant allele which is represented by capital A and the recessive allele which is represented by uh, small a. So you can see that when the, um, uh, the dominant allele frequency is increasing, the recessive allele frequency is decreasing. So you can see that when the dominant allele frequency is 0 on x-axis, the, uh, the recessive allele frequency is maximum that is 1 and when it is the dominant allele frequency that is pa it is increasing from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 to 0.5 to 0.6 to 0.7 and so on you can see that the recessive allele frequency is uh, decreasing so they have an inverse relationship that when the dominant allele frequency will increase the recessive allele frequency will decrease and you can see here that uh, uh, the heterozygous individual uh, the heterozygous genotypes they, they can have the maximum genotypic frequency as 0.5 so the frequency of the heterozygous is greatest when the allelic frequency are equal that is p is equal to q is equal to 0.5 why this is so because p plus q is equal to 1 so uh, and p square plus q square plus 2 pq is equal to also 1 so 2 pq that is your heterozygous individual genotypic frequency can have maximum value only when uh, they have the equal frequencies the genotypic frequency of the homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive genotypes similarly you can see that when the frequency of one allele is high most of the individuals are homozygous so here in this uh, chart you can see that the red line represents the red line represents the homozygous recessive 
genotype and when the frequency its frequency is uh, decreasing you see that the the frequency of homozygous dominant is increasing and the maximum value of genotype uh, no, 0.5 we can also solve apart from the two equations which we yeah, have just discussed they have equal frequencies so it is represented in the plus two uh, q square plus 2 pq is equal to 1 we can also solve problems when the number of individuals is given and so for calculating allelic frequency we have already discussed in the first part of the lecture that we have to remember that this um, frequency of allele can be calculated by this formula uh, number of copies of the allele upon number of copies of uh, all alleles at the locus where um, uh, you can see in 25.3 that where n a n um, n represents the number of homozygous heterozygous and um, um, homozygous recessive homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive homozygous dominant and heterozygous um, genotypes or individuals so this is another formula which you have to remember and you can refer peers uh, for this this is now when we calculate the genotypic frequency then we can calculate allelic frequency by this formula where the uh, frequency of a capital a means the frequency of dominant allele and this is frequency of dominant allele uh, uh, dominant frequency of homozygous dominant genotype plus half the frequency of uh, heterozygous because heterozygous is half because it has only one dominant allele and this is two dominant alleles similarly q that is your frequency of recessive allele is uh, frequency of homozygous recessive plus half the frequency of heterozygous so this we have already discussed in first part of this lecture and this is a work problem which we have already discussed how we calculate genotypic frequency and uh, from genotypic frequency how we calculate allelic frequency so this we have already discussed in first part of the lecture this and uh, this you can uh, refer uh, peers for this why uh, we are discussing it again so that we can just see the different kind of questions which come from uh, this particular topic hardy weinberg's law so this is first kind of question where we are calculating the genotypic frequency from the number uh, of individuals given and you can just see that frequency can be calculated by dividing the genotype upon total genotype uh, and then uh, the frequency comes and then from from the genotypic frequency which comes we can calculate the gene frequency uh, the allele frequency by putting this formula and just it becomes easy and we can there is another way uh, by which we can calculate the frequency of allele from the number itself and you, you can apply this formula for calculating so whatever way um, is easy for you you can just remember that so, so this is the first kind of question uh, related to uh, hardy weinberg's law now this is another problem uh, again from peers and this is again this is a different kind of question or uh, it is related to first kind where you see the question in the question the number has been given and so you uh, calculate the frequency of allele by putting the number itself and then uh, first you calculate the dominant uh, allele frequency and then by putting the formula p plus q uh, is equal to 1 you calculate the uh, recessive allele frequency and then after uh, calculating the dominant allele frequency and recessive allele frequency you calculate the genotype by putting the formula p square plus 2 pq and q square so this is another kind of solved problem which is given in pairs and these are some concept check problems so these are again from pairs so you can just see which statement is not an assumption of hardy weinberg law so we know that allelic frequency uh, are equal this is wrong so this is not true and in the second question what is the expected frequency of heterozygotes in population with allelic frequency x and y so we know that this will be 2xy because this represents 2pq now this is another kind of question 
where this is uh, if the genotypes capital A, capital A, capital A, small a and A, A have frequencies this, this, this. Uh, what are P and Q after a single generation of mating? So in this question, how we calculate it? You just see that we calculate. Uh, we have been given the frequencies of genotypes. So uh, we can calculate uh, frequency of uh, dominant um, allele frequency by this formula and then uh, once we get the number of p then we can apply p plus q is equal to 1 and we can get the value of q and then from this p and q value we can calculate p square to p q and q square so this is uh, the second kind of question which we have just discussed which where the numbers are not given but the frequency is given now this is the question in this no numbers no frequency given in this population of pigs black pig is recessive over white determine the percentage of pig uh, population uh, that is heterozygous for white so in these kind of questions we just see we, we, we start from the recessive genotype we calculate uh, the recessive genotype first frequency of recessive genotype first and then we calculate the frequency of from that we calculate the frequency of recessive allele so for example in this question the first step is that you calculate q square that is your homozygous recessive uh, um, uh, genotypic frequency and then you calculate q by taking the under root of, and then you calculate p and then you calculate 2pq so this is how this is the technique of solving hardy weinberg's problem that you calculate the homozygous recessive genotype then uh, homozygous recessive allele frequency then you uh, apply the formula p plus q is equal to 1 and then you calculate the heterozygous individual frequency now this is another kind of question where you are given about 70 percent of all white north americans can taste the chemical uh, PTC and remainder cannot. The ability to, to taste is determined by the uh, dominant allele and inability by recessive allele. So you have to calculate genotypic and allelic frequency. So in this kind of question also, you will first find out the allelic frequency of uh, recessive allele by uh, taking the under root by uh, of the frequency of homozygous recessive individual and then applying the formula p plus q is equal to 1 calculating p and then uh, calculating p square q square and 2 pq now this is uh, these are some more problems where you can see that how we are just taking the q square and then taking under root of q to find recessive allele frequency and then applying it to find the dominant allele p is equal to 1 minus q and then then uh, the sol the we can also calculate the heterozygous genotype. So here again, uh, uh, question number five. Uh, you can see the question and then calculate Q square. Calculate Q by taking the under root. Calculate P, and then this question is solved. So this is another question. Uh, this is these are for your references. You can solve these questions on your own and you can practice as many questions as you can uh, from different books like Pierce, Griffiths, Snustad, um, Russell etc. So it will make your concepts more, more clear. So thank you students.